This is five on your side at six, focused on you. We start with breaking developments surrounding the St. Louis police SUV that crashed into Bar PM in South City on Monday. The officer driving says he was distracted by his radio. One of the owners was arrested and is facing misdemeanor charges. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson and for Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Police staged a private meeting at station headquarters to show select portions of body camera video to a handful of city officials this morning. That's what several sources who were in that meeting are telling our political editor, Mark Maxwell. And he joins us now with what they saw. Ann and Kelly, good evening. Five on your side has not yet seen any of that body camera footage yet, so it's impossible to independently verify what's on it. Right now, that video remains on police servers, but there's new signs tonight that police are slowly starting to share snippets of that video with Alderman and the mayor's office. According to several sources who were in that room this morning, the mayor's chief of staff, Jared Boyd, was there. The older woman who represents those bar owners, Ann Schweitzer, was there. A number of other City Hall officials and advocates with the LGBTQIA plus advisory board, all of them in attendance. The video begins after the first bar owner is already in handcuffs. So city officials who reviewed the video did not see how that initial arrest happened. Police have already said the older SUV was not equipped with dash cam video. So the video picks up after one owner is in cuffs and his partner then comes into the picture very upset with the scene as it's unfolding. Sources tell us they saw two different video angles showing a confrontation take place near a gate that leads uh, to a gangway alongside the building. They felt police could have used better verbal de-escalation tactics to keep it from getting so tense. That's when a third body camera goes down that dark gangway as officers followed Chad Morris, one of the bar owners there. Sources told us the video does show Morris shove an officer, but sources told us it was later too dark to see if any physical blows occurred down that gangway. They said they could hear Morris asking officers why they hit him. We have more information up on KSDK.com right now where you can look at. But one key thing to note, up until now, police and the mayor's office have suggested that releasing all this body camera video could either compromise the investigation or perhaps insult the owners who may not have seen the body cam video yet. So the choice to show portions of this video today to a select group of politicians and public officials, very likely to only increase calls for the department to share it with the public. Interesting turn of events. Thank you, Mark. Some South St. Louis residents say they'll think twice about putting mail in their blue collection box after it was left wide open this week. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live for us at the U.S. Postal Service in downtown St. Louis. And certainly neighbors have plenty of concerns right now. Kelly, that's right. Neighbors say they are worried their mail won't make it to their destination after that blue mail collection box was left wide open on the corner of Wilson and Sublet Avenue. And the Postal Police Officers Association says it's getting out of hand. You just have to be well informed as much as you can to know that there's a problem. The Hill residents say there's a mail problem in their neighborhood. Barb Judici gave five on your side permission to use this photo she took of a blue mailbox at the corner of Wilson and Sublet Avenue wide open this week. Judici didn't want to talk on camera but says it's not the first time it's happened. She's even gone to lengths of putting signs on the blue box to warn her neighbors not to use it after trying to send a check for $28 and it being washed for $3,000 by thieves. We checked the blue box today and it was locked. Her neighbor Jim Summers says he too has distrust in the blue boxes. I don't send anything through the mail. I do it tech, uh, with tech at the bank. I just don't mail checks uh, because I know about that now. Frank Albergo with the Postal Police Officers Association says officers that protect letter carriers have been reduced by the U.S. Postal Service for years. He says the root of the issue are thieves targeting carriers to steal arrow keys to the boxes. Most likely uh, some criminal has the arrow key to that box and they stole mail and they left it open. The U.S. Postal Service says in the first half of 2023, there were 25,000 mail theft incidents. Albergo says it puts people's personal information at a greater risk, especially during the holiday season. So whoever mailed a letter in that box, um, it's gone now. If it were a check, then they have a problem because that check is going to be washed or counterfeited and it will be cashed. We as people in the community uh, have to be involved as much as we can 
and pay attention and protect our neighbors. Watch what's going on. Senator Dick Durbin has introduced a bill to the Senate called the Postal Police Reform Act. This act would allow the Postal Service to deploy more postal officers for protection. And Frank Albergo calls this common sense. Now we have reached out to the U.S. Postal Service for comment as to why this blue box was left open, and we are still awaiting their response. Reporting live downtown, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. The sudden closure of a St. Louis nursing home left hundreds without a job right before Christmas. The Northview Village nursing home abruptly closed last week. <clears throat> now elected leaders and agencies are stepping in to help. Our Justina Cornell joins us in studio. Justina. Yeah, and so immediately following that closure, St. Louis's job center realized they needed to connect Northview employees with other employers. And besides that, a group of elected officials and local leaders decided donations were necessary. The callousness of it, the unfilling, the n n no notice at all. As quickly as Northview closed its doors. I've never experienced anything like that. Support came rushing in. I'm going to put my money and my purse where my mouth is. More than 170 residents were removed from the nursing home and about 180 employees were forced out of a job. It is unfair to the people who uh, who resided there, but it's equally unfair to the people who take care of us. Older woman Sharon Tyus lives right near Northview as it sits in her ward. That's why she's donating $5,000. Five dollars counts, a dollar counts, every bit counts because these people have not gotten a check in almost a month now. And she's partnered with state senators and local leaders to form a fund for the displaced workers. If we can make calls to raise money to run for office, we can make those same calls to raise money for people who don't really know when they're going to get paid again. The St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment, known as Slate, is quickly stepping in too. The moment we got the word, we knew that we had to jump into action. So we uh, had an emergency meeting and uh, we are now putting together emergency job fairs. The agency is trying to open doors. At least 15 to 16 uh, employers right now that are actually very, very excited to be able to give those opportunities. The goal was to act fast in a moment that's changed lives forever. They're hurt, they're, they're trying to figure out what's next, but as far as it goes, when we came out there, had those conversations and let them know that we are there for support, uh, they, were, they were very, very hopeful, you know, and it made them happy and they were excited to be able to come to the job fair to see, see what's next for their opportunities. Now, Alder woman Taya said she's also working to see if they can make the laws tighter so this never happens again. Now, if you need information on the job fairs or want to donate, you can head to our website, casedecay.com, and go to the section as seen on TV. We know that yodel from a forward chair turn to first runner up, Foley native Ruby Lee is back home after a spectacular run on The Voice, the 16-year-old self-taught singer landed at St. Louis Lambert International Airport just a short time ago. And of course, she got quite the welcome when she arrived. Laura Barczewski's live at the airport. Laura. Yes, Kelly and Ann, she is finally back home. Our Missouri contestant from The Voice, Ruby Lee, is here. She had quite the welcome wagon coming in off the uh, plane today. The flight coming from Denver. We had all those people cheering her on. Take a listen to what they, what they said as she came off the plane. <laughs> Not much for words, but lots of woos as she came off the plane tonight. And I have a special surprise for you all. Ruby Lee is here with me right now. She is so excited to be home. Ruby, tell me, you know, just how happy you are to be here and, and how great this whole experience was. Um, the experience was so amazing. It was one of those things where it's just kind of like, would I even be able to get on the show? And then I did. And then like to be there and be there for so long, I mean, I may not have won, but I definitely feel like a winner. Um, I got an even bigger fan base now, an even bigger family, as I like to call it, and um, that's just all I could could hope for. And I got that, and you know, to be back home is great because like I've missed the food here. I'll tell you what, because like food in California is not very good. Um, <laughs> it really isn't. Um, but you know, I'm so happy to be back, and the flight just seemed so so quick compared to you know going to california and like like anticipating everything it's just it felt like so quick to to get back um so it was great i i'm i'm just really happy to be back and what did you think about all the people here to say hi to you welcome you home i mean how much does it mean to have their support you know through all of this and still 
You know, it means a lot to me. Um, like, as soon as I got off the plane, I had some some flight attendants and, and people that were getting ready to board the next plane that were, like, right there, and they're like, Ruby Lee! And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> I look horrible, because I was on, like, the longest flight. But, um, yeah, I... It's just, it means a lot to me. It's great to have people that support me and, like, care about me. Like, people I've, some people I've never even met that are just, like, I was voting for you this whole time. Um, it means a lot to me knowing that, um, you know, there's just these people that I never met, some that I may never meet, um, that are just behind me. And, you know, it means a lot to me. So I'm, I'm really happy to be back here and be surrounded by people that, that care about me. Well, thank you, Ruby. You're a winner to us, even though you may have been second place on that show. So we will have more coming up tonight at 10, and we'll bring you all the latest and get a little more sneak peek into everything that happened after the show. All right, Laura, hold on. Can I ask one question Laura of Ruby? Bercheski. Oh, yes, yes. I know her dad was and with what, her. What do, you, what do you want to ask? Her dad was with her every step of the way. It had to be so stressful, so many ups and downs. What's the best piece of advice her father gave her during all of this? So Anne wants to ask you what the best piece of advice your dad gave you throughout all this. He was with you the whole way. Um, just kind of to, to believe in myself, put my faith in God, and, you know, everything happens for a reason. It's not, you know, just because I didn't win doesn't mean that I didn't win, you know, because um, I, I definitely won, and I, I feel really good about it. And he was just uh, coaching me through the entire time, just like, don't worry about it, like, just get up there and sing like it's about singing like you you've done this a million times before it's just it's the exact same thing you know they're just people so I was like you know okay and it, it calmed me down a lot so um you know I I would say that you know just kind of be yourself don't worry about it and you know I made it as far as I did so I mean I guess it helped out quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> well thank you Ruby anything else from you guys back there in the studio we no, do have we'll it but we're out of time yes. so. and congratulations <laughs> to her she is a winner yeah a huge accomplishment more she at is 10 a winner. more at 10 thanks you guys boy oh boy can't wait to see the future still to come thousands of cameras monitoring the streets of St. Louis day and night we'll take you inside the real-time crime center Y'all can send her her questions. Just text Laura. <laughs> that is ask true. Well, I've got know. a lot of questions. We'll find I do out too. at 10. Hey, weather-wise, you want to know what's going on? I got news for you. There's a lot of rain in our forecast, but we're spreading it out over a few days. See you in a couple of minutes.